Mordor is a distressingly dangerous place. If Talion isn't dealing with spiders the size of elephants trying to eat his lovely face, he's battling trolls who want to grind him into a delicious ranger paste. That's why it's so important to avoid making unnecessary mistakes. Whether it's avoiding fire-breathing drakes, clearing out your hard drive to make space for the game's huge install file, or hacking orc brains to assemble your own personal fighting force, here are six mistakes to avoid making in Middle-earth Shadow of War. Just because Talion is a near-unkillable superhero who is paranormally bound to an even deadlier undead elf BFF doesn't mean you need to stomp around Middle-earth slaughtering everything you see. The next time you bump into an orc, why not resist the urge to garrot him on sight and instead use a little diplomatic persuasion to calm the situation down. A few hours into Shadow of War, Talion gains the ability to dominate his enemies. Translation, he can mine Jack foes and convince them to act out his every orc and uruk bashing fantasy. With some sly stealth and a little patience, you can soon build up a posse of loyal, albeit hypnotized followers, who will turn on their former brothers at your command. When raiding an orc encampment, make sure to dominate a few of the archers and grunts guarding its perimeter. That way, should the warg doo, doo hit the fan, you'll have a group of coerced killers you can call on in an instant. Sure, quietly messing with orc minds may not be as immediately satisfying as lopping their ugly mugs off, but hacking your enemy's brains is far more useful in the long run. So next time you see an orc, sheath that sword. You'll get a lot further with some good old-fashioned brainwashing. Shadow of War's in-store file is big. It's bigger than a titanic scrap between a brassed-off Balrog and possessed Grag Monster. Weighing in at just under 100 gigabytes, the PC version of the game is downright colossal. So do yourself a favor. Before you download the epic orc enslaving adventure, make sure to clear a serious amount of space on your hard drive. Admittedly, 97.7 gigs may seem like an absurdly sizable download, but then again, who said playing around in a massive open world Middle Earth with drool worthy 4K texture packs and Nemesis Fortress battles involving hundreds of on screen orcs was ever going to be an intimate affair? Shadow of War isn't all slicing orcs in two and scampering up towers like a friendly neighborhood webslinger. If you want to capture the game's epic Nemesis Fortresses, diligent planning and careful tactics are required. Well, that and a ton of orc eviscerations. Before you rock up to a fortress with an armada of subservient Uruk's Italian's oh so rugged back, you'd be wise to try to weaken the structure's defenses. Try to kickstart your siege without first eliminating a fortress's war chiefs, and the ranger and his enslaved chums are likely to get cut down before they can even smash the door in. If you want to take those control points and eliminate the resident overlord, Thinning the big cheater's ranks, mainly through brutal assassinations and treachery, can be hugely helpful. Take out a particular war chief, and suddenly your forces no longer have to face being pelted by the flaming projectiles of his grag war beasts. While it's technically possible to saunter up to a fortress without doing your prior pummeling due diligence, you'll make life a whole lot easier by weakening an overlord's forces beforehand. With the right amount of cold blooded strategy, you can turn taking a nemesis fortress from a murdery marathon to a joyful, super violent jog. There are three words in Shadow of War you should live by to make the whole controlling gigantic armies of orcs business easier. Delegate, delegate, and delegate. All right, that's one word said three times, but nevertheless, learning when to slip orders to your stab happy subordinates can really free up Talion's plate for more pressing business, like riding fantasy wolf beasties, or giving those quads a rigorous workout with the ranger's thoroughly badass Shadow Striker double jump. Once you've built up a healthy number of brainwashed orcs using Talion's domination ability, it's time to assign your followers some homework. And by homework, we mean send them off to infiltrate, spy on, and horribly murder enemy captains and war chiefs. Issuing orders to Talion's followers only takes a couple of quick button presses, and commanding one of the mind-controlled monsters to do your barbaric bidding can save a whole lot of time. Whether they're directly bumping off your foes or becoming traitorous bodyguards to rival war chiefs, just so they can get nice and close and stab them in the back, and the gut, and the pelvis, and the neck, having an army of obedient assassins at your beck and call sure is handy. So ask yourself this, why run around Middle Earth's massive map hunting down and interrogating every last Tom, Dick and Shag the Raven when you could just let your Orc employees do all of the hard work for you? The first rule of Orc Fight Club, 
you do not talk about Orc Fight Club. The second rule of Orc Fight Club? Psst, we should totally tell everyone about Orc Fight Club. Shadow of War's fighting pits are a terrific way to separate the wimpy wheat from the killer chaff. Once you've taken control of a region, the best way to keep Talion's Orc and Uruk followers on their disgusting toes is by sending them to these fisticuffs-loving coliseums. Is Crosh of the Black Gate getting a little smug and complacent since you promoted him to the rank of captain? Then motivate his ungrateful keister in the most murderous fashion possible by forcing the Lazy Oaf to battle a fellow high-ranking Orc to the death in Mordor's fight pits. If he wins, your follower will level up, making him an even more lethally useful ally in the wars to come. And if he loses, well, that's just good leadership on your part. After all, any orc who can't stand up to being brutally beaten, shot in the face with a crossbow, then curb stomped into oblivion clearly isn't worth having on Team Talion. Talion may be an undead assassin who can off orcs with fancy pants enchanted arrows and let him teleport, but even he has to learn to pick his battles. And when said battle involves a fire-breathing fiend who could barbecue his handsome ranger hide in two seconds flat, there's really no shame in tucking tail and running for the Mordor Hills. Threats in Shadow of War don't get any more fatally fiery than the terrifying Drake. Not only do these aerial assassins love feasting on those goody two-shoes giant eagles from Return of the King, they can even call down a Balrog in lethally frigid fashion. Considering Talion doesn't master the magic needed to control and ride these flying abominations until a good few hours into Shadow of War, you'd be wise giving them the widest berth imaginable during the game's early stages. It's not like you can blame Drakes for being so cranky either. If you were the ungodly offspring of dragons and fell beasts bred in the ghastly pits of Barad-dur by Saren himself, you'd probably be a mite irritable too. Take our advice, if you see a drake, run. Run as fast as Talion's dreamy legs will carry him. Of course, if you manage to get Talion to a high enough level that he can stand up to an aerial assault from these beasts, you can scratch the running part and skip directly to chopping their piping hot necks off. Take that, you drake dusted. 